No Machine is the coolest remote desktop management software that you've never heard of. And it works on every operating system. And if you have already heard of it, I expect you to back me up in the comments down below because it truly is awesome. And you're awesome too if you'll back me up on this one. If you disagree, let's hear your recommendation and I'll look into that as well. By the way, uh, you're watching DS Tech Media. I'm Jay, and of course, I want you to like, share, and subscribe. I make videos about tech and media, stuff about making music and video itself, especially Linux and open source, and sometimes news and documentaries. So when it comes to remote desktops, there's always been two main legacy protocols, which are VNC and RDP. VNC, or Virtual Network Computing, and it's the open source desktop sharing protocol. RDP is the remote desktop protocol. It's a Microsoft product, and it's primarily used for Windows. It's known for better performance, but generally, you can only use RDP if the remote machine is Windows, but it kind of ends right there. Most Linux desktops such as Ubuntu come with a VNC client like Remina installed by default. Remina includes VNC and RDP access and even VNC through SSH tunneling for security because VNC is considered fundamentally insecure. For example, uh, here I am monitoring my TCP UDP connections and regularly there will be an attempt to connect on port 5900, which is the default VNC port. No machine uses NX technology. NX was developed as a superior alternative that could improve speed even over slow connections like dial-up. NX was open source until version 4 when it became proprietary. Yes, no machine is free proprietary software. However, unlike TeamViewer, it does not use an intermediary server between connections. It includes encryption of UDP traffic and two-factor authentication. It also supports Kerberos password authentication and the paid subscription version allows for SSH tunneling. Plus, No Machine offers a ton of other benefits such as a really great implementation of multi-monitor support, file transfers, screen recording, audio support, and a lot more. They've got it for iOS and Android, Raspberry Pi, Windows, Mac, and Linux. They have a machine ID system for connecting to computers, and you can work with more than one person. There's two layer security, file sharing, et cetera, and so forth. One of the greatest things about No Machine is how easy it is to get up and running. I've used TeamViewer, Remina. Uh, I've attempted to use RDP. That's a whole other fiasco if you're not using Windows Professional. Every install is both a server and a client. And for the most part, it should automatically detect that no machine is installed on another computer on your local network. So here we are. This is the uh, main window. And if we go to player, we've got a ton of features in here. We've got appearance options, fonts, transfers, allowing others to send you a file. This lets you set paths to be used for no machine settings, recordings, and transferred files. And then over here, we have the server options. Under security, we've got allow guest sharing on this server, desktop access, make access available when the system is in the login screen, don't allow the owner of desktop to connect if desktop is not shared, only allow user connections for desktop sharing, require accepting the connection on the remote machine, show desktop is viewed by somebody when it's connected, blank the physical screen when somebody connects, and lock the physical screen on disconnect server devices, disks, printers, USB, smart card readers, network ports, and audio streaming. And for performance, we've got you can record remotely, use a specific display encoding, H.264, VP8, and MJPEG. Hardware encoding, 
you can set a specific frame rate and use acceleration for display processing. And so that's your basic options, basically. Now I'm going to go over into the other studio and remote into this computer. And here we go. I'm just going to click on the Pop OS, enter the password, and it's going to give us our little a little run through tutorial. And we have the option to scale the remote desktop to fit the native resolution here, even to change the remote display to match the window. So if we do control alt zero, that releases our local keyboard so we can control our local machine again. And when we do that, we can change the key that brings up this display, change the page peel for menu access. I'm leaving it at the top right, but you can change it to bottom right, bottom left. Uh, we can always show remote cursor pointer, emulate middle button, grab keyboard input, grab mouse input, etc. and so forth. Display. Uh, these are our display options. Iconize. We can full screen it on all monitors, full screen it on just one monitor. Resize remote display, scale to window, enable viewport mode, and select remote display. Change settings. Oh yeah, here we go. So we can set resolution. I'm at 1920 by 1080 now. Uh, we can adjust between high speed or best quality. Set a custom resolution. Disable network adaptive display quality, multipass display encoding, frame buffering, client side image post processing, client side hardware decoding, uh, audio. We've got audio streaming enabled. Pick what it plays on, and this will let us forward our microphone to the remote system. This is an important option is to mute the audio on the server. So that means on the remote machine, it's not going to actually come through the speakers. So recording, open recording, change settings. So we got quality, show blinking frame while recording, uh, and then show the recording bar. And we can bring that up at any time by hitting control R. -R. So here's the recording bar. I'm going to close that and control alt R brings it back up. Very cool. So this is the, the peel strip and this gives you a scaling, the display, full screen, iconize. But the most important is select remote display. So in the other room there, I have two monitors. With this, we can quickly switch between either one. On monitor two, I have OBS running because I was recording for this video, obviously, just to give you an idea of how responsive it is. And it's pretty much at real time speed. The display quality isn't perfect, but I can turn the lights in the studio down bring them up just to show you it is indeed working and of course sending the audio audio playback is great Here are all my, <laughs> my audio connections on the other machine. This is the audio that we just heard. So this is running into the no machine server and coming out over here. And then this one is the remapped NX voice out 178 and that's capture one. And if I wanted to, I could send this microphone. Well, here we, let's go ahead. Let's test it. Let's run this into OBS. I'm enabling mic in. Let's record. So right now I'm recording remotely onto the other computer and I'll, um, I mean, you're watching me do it right now. So I'll pipe that in at some point. But, but yeah, for 100% free, this is an awesome piece of software. 
it sucks that it's not open source, but it's widely embraced by the open source community. The uh, the quality in your or VNC or a little choppy. I'm not 100% sure why. Uh, I mean, I do have a lot running on both ends at the moment, so that could be why. Uh, also, I have the quality set to meet mid for the audio, so maybe if I adjusted that up, we'd have uh, better results. It's a better experience than I've had with TeamViewer or VNC. Oh, and also, it's virtually just as easy with Android, or I assume iOS. I can't test it on iOS, but I am going to demo it for you on Android in just a second here. And then when you're ready to disconnect... Uh, we can take a screenshot, take statistics, take the logs, or just disconnect. And it's, it's that easy. It's pretty awesome. In the app indicator, you can find the whiteboard tool as well as the file sharing and recording bar. The whiteboard lets you communicate with the remote user or take notes. Uh, you enter text directly into something sort of similar to a chat messaging dialogue. It also has basic drawing tools like shapes, brushes, arrows, fonts. It's nothing fancy, but it allows you to communicate with someone on the remote system. You could probably use it for tech support tasks. You can save the whiteboard as an HTML file. File transfer is pretty straightforward. You pick the file and a progress dialog comes up. For this example, I saved the whiteboard and transferred it. The Android app is pretty close to the desktop app, but only the client. There is no server. It gives you a straightforward and basic tutorial, and it mostly includes all the same basic options. It also gives you a tutorial of the touch gestures. There's still a toolbar on the right hand side that lets you bring up the on-screen keyboard, switch between touch and mouse mode. With mouse mode, your touch screen moves the mouse the same way a laptop trackpad would which is great for fine details like scrubbing video playback. There's a zoom and an option to switch between the monitors as well. It's tap to click, tap and hold to right click. Three finger tap brings up the keyboard. Spread and pinch zooms in and out. Two finger swipe scrolls up and down and three finger swipe lets you drag the viewport around. It's surprisingly good for controlling a multi-monitor system from a phone. But if you had to do any more detailed or extended work from a phone, you could use a USB hub. With this USB hub, I can plug in a keyboard, mouse, and even connect a larger display, Ethernet for a faster network connection, and even run the audio out to speakers. But most importantly, you can manage critical tasks with just a smartphone. Yeah, if you had a tablet, then it would work very well. And so, uh, there you have it. There is no machine, and their NX protocol, excellent remote desktop, and I would highly recommend it. Not open source, but widely considered to be far more secure than using VNC. Although, I don't know if that includes VNC with SSH, so your mileage may vary. Uh, let me know your thoughts below. Do you have a better solution? If not, give it a try. I highly recommend it. Also, like, share, subscribe, all that good jazz. Uh, if you watched the video this far, you, you should definitely hit that thumbs up button for me. I appreciate you taking the time to watch. I'm Jay. You've been watching DS Tech Media. Until next time, I'll see you in the next one.